Forensic Care is unique in Victoria particularly in that it provides specialist mental health services and it's really the only service that does this at all different points in the criminal justice system. So we're in magistrates courts in Victoria, we're in the prison system where people get received into custody and it provides hospital based care at the Tom Assembling Hospital in Fairfield. It's in a whole range of prison services, including some of the bigger regional prisons in Victoria. In the coming years, what we're going to be doing is expanding more into some of the private prisons that operate in Victoria, at the Port Phillip Prison and also the new Ravenhall Prison. From its inception, Forensic Care has strived to become a centre of excellence to attract the best, the brightest, the people who really want to make a difference because it's that population, it's that group of staff that we need to address the very complex people that we deal with. We're different from other mental health services. Uh, we're a statewide agency. We deal with complex comorbid cases. Uh, most of our patients are challenging and that defines really the nature of all we do with them. So not only do we address their mental health issues um, that are obviously really present when they come to us uh, for the first time, but we also look um, really hard at their risk issues, the other things that have meant um, they are unique to our service and that have contributed to their offending behaviour. We work with men and women who before they've had contact with us, life wasn't going really well. For a lot of people, we're the first time when they really get the chance to get well. They're really some of the most marginalised and disadvantaged people in our society. Our staff are doing a fantastic job in terms of working with them to try and see some hope, but also to get out of prison and safely transition back to the care they need in the community. We recruit internationally, we have a range of people from all over the world. People bring us ideas and experiences that have worked elsewhere. It's a good place to work. People know that there's a lot of support for staff and there is a capacity to grow in your profession. No day's the same, no hour's the same. There's always something that's challenging, there's always something that's exciting, there's always something that's new. But when you're dealing with the mind, every single person is so unique and every single person is so different, so every single day is different. It's very interesting work, clinically, uh, it's dynamic, you get the opportunity to work within a multidisciplinary team. One of the really good parts of working with Forensic Care is the, the supervision that you uh, receive, the training that you receive. In some organisations you are there and you are on your own. In Forensic Care you don't feel like you are on your own. We work as a team, you will get ongoing support and the opportunity to develop yourself and advance your uh, career. You can do advanced training in Forensic Psychiatry where you rotate through acute rehabilitation, prison, community jobs. I reckon the opportunities uh, within the organisation are definitely one of the things that stands out from other organisations. Um, the opportunities seem to be staring you in the face wherever you turn really. I can't imagine myself going anywhere else. I guess mostly I just wanted to challenge myself in such a specialised field. The people that I work with is one of the main reasons why I like the job I'm in at the moment. I always feel supported. I've worked at Forensic Care for almost 17 years now and to be honest the thing that keeps me here is the collegial aspect of it, that people are working towards a common goal to see the individual consumer, the opportunities that they have for recovery and to work really collaboratively to see those opportunities achieved. The environments we work in are set up so people can have those occupational opportunities to learn new skills so that when they do get out to the community they can have a safer, more engaged, more meaningful life. The job's obviously challenging, um, but it has so many benefits. Um, everything from just a really meaningful interaction with a patient um, who may not have engaged therapeutically with people before, um, to being able to really have a diverse role as a psychologist in this organisation. There's a great passion in the work that our staff do, a really strong commitment to social justice that they're prepared to show people. I love working in Melbourne. The weather is fantastic. The people are beautiful. I call Melbourne home now. It's, it's a city that literally doesn't sleep. You can go and get a cup of tea or a cup of coffee at two o'clock in the morning. It's got everything. If you're interested in sport, music, food, 
we have world-class facilities, world-class staff, world-class research, world-class education, and that's what really keeps people here. It kind of felt like I'd um, always been there as soon as I got there. I'd say it is fun, yeah. I'll see comes to forensic care. It was just a feeling. I knew it. Deep down, I just feel like I'm where I'm meant to be. Thomas Embling Hospital itself is named after Thomas Embling, who was the first medical director of the original Yarra Bend Asylum. He was someone who was a maverick, making sure his patient group had a meaningful life and were treated in a very humane way. Many years ago, we were paternalistic. We directed patients, we told them what to do, we thought we knew best. Now that the recovery model has taken traction in mental health services, uh, we're much more aware that we need to engage the, the patient as a partner in their recovery. Forensic Care not only says that they value recovery but they put it into every policy, every strategy from the CEO and the board all the way through to the patients. Staff have been very good at their jobs. They've helped me through my darkest times, helped me to get where I am now. To start with, the staff have to hold the hope. Life will get better, their health will get better and that they're worthy of that and that we're there from the start. Once you enter the forensic system, you, you lose a lot. You lose contact with the community, you can lose contact with your friends and your family. Um, for patients who have lost a lot of things, finding something that gives them hope and optimism is really important. I came in here and I was hearing voices and living in isolation and here I am at Thomas Emling and voices are gone and getting in touch with my culture and my family. One that I've had a lot of pleasure in is a man who hadn't worked for 20 years, who had a really difficult recovery with his own mental health and we took 18 months but over that time we were able to work with him to get a job and he started off at an hour a week with myself there and over about eight months he got up to eight hours by himself and that was something which he'd always been told he'd never be able to return to work but by going back to work, he was able to wake up in the morning, he had a reason, he had a purpose. When they first come to the acute units, it's quite hard to be having a conversation about recovery at that stage. But even then, suppose they go out on campus and they meet up with consumers who are further in their journey, say, from the rehab units. That can give them hope and inspiration. Hey, maybe I can get there too. Maybe it's not all as bad as it looks right now. They come to us probably feeling a lot of despair and in a little bit of denial about the issues that have occurred that have resulted in them being admitted to forensic care. We see them go through a willingness to accept uh, what needs to occur and ultimately we see that they can return to the community and have a meaningful life. It's great to have a combination of staff and patients here as usual. We have a consumer advisory group where consumers are able to contribute to policy development. It's more than just a concept to apply to things, it's about working collaboratively with patients to get to goals that are meaningful for them, not just goals that clinicians want to tick off. It's like a community, but it's learning to understand who the people are who live in this place. Sometimes people are very depressed and I see them get out of that depression and I see them have hope that their relative will improve. The recovery pyramid was a really simple incentive that happened between the patient consulting group, the consumer consultant and some staff and from there it's actually changed the direction of the organisation and it aimed to demonstrate that from the littlest, darkest days, a bigger and brighter and better life and safer sense of yourself can happen. I was part of the patient consulting group and we came up with the concept of the pyramid. So for example, the first step can be denial. Um, people come through when they first get there and they don't want to accept that they do have a mental illness. In the beginning it's all denial and delusions and 
and all that sort of stuff and you work your way up to being well. You know, there's nothing better than a phone call to your mum when you're really upset, but there's also nothing better than doing something normal with your parents, like going for coffee, remembering that you're not just a patient, you're a person as well. The recovery model works so well in forensic care because the organisation places such a, a large importance on the idea that patients have not only the right, but also the responsibility to have input into their treatment and their recovery. At the beginning, I never thought I could have a meaningful life and I'm slowly getting there. Give someone something to look forward to. I feel really good today, yeah. I've been getting out on unescorted leave and done a bit of shopping this morning and I haven't felt this good in years, yeah. Put the glasses on, okay. make sure there's no dust in your eyes, keep your hands clear. At Tom Assembly we're really lucky that we have an on-site TAFE Education Institute so they provide nine national certificates that the men and women can participate in from a certificate one up to a pre-apprenticeship. Well, that's, Jack, that's well done. Thanks. That's really good. We have an on-site health and fitness centre with personal trainers, a dietitian service, a physiotherapy service to make sure that those barriers to physical health are looked after. We also have a lot of really unique purpose-built spaces being designed with the patient and the staff in mind. Cultural diversity is something that we need to be aware of in our daily practice. So we're very mindful of our culturally and linguistically diverse clientele, but also we have cultural portfolio holders who join with their statewide colleagues monthly to, to talk about initiatives and to promote activities. We have a Koori men's group that we run regularly and we're very fortunate to have built and launched an Aboriginal fire pit inside Tom Assembling Hospital, which is a way for Aboriginal men and women to be able to engage in care and treatment but in a more culturally appropriate, culturally safe space. I started producing art that felt right to me and one of these days um, I'll be free with it. I hope a job and a wife and a few kids. These little bits of hope um, keeps you going through and that's where I've got to where I am today. I've never been so happy to have that chance. Nurses at Forensic Care play an important and central role across all our services from Thomas Embling Hospital, Men and Women's Prison Services and our community services. The diverse nature of the work we do means our nurses remain focused on patient-centred practice. They work with patients and consumers with different needs at different stages of recovery, from early intervention and prevention to rehabilitation and community transition support. And due to the growth we're experiencing, nurses at Forensic Care can now work in a range of mental health settings, meaning they can take on new and complex roles and achieve rewarding career and personal growth opportunities. An enormous part of being a registered nurse is the recovery of a patient. When you do see a patient reaching these goals and you know that you're part of the team that helped them reach them, it's quite a, a, a thrilling thing to be a part of. Our role of being able to provide treatment, supervise their order and also support their linkages to other services is extremely important in their recovery journey. And being in a role to do that, it's fantastic. I find it really exciting and rewarding. So a forensic care nurse has a broader role. They are really the front line and they are in most ways the most important change agent that we have because they're the ones 24 hours a day, seven days a week there for the consumer group. You're there to help people, so they respond well to that. You know, I may be talking to somebody about their kids and their family, but I'm also looking at all the different processes that make up their mental state. And then once you've got that, then you can put them into the right service that they need. We really look forward to having you back and involved in those. So. Many of our nurses benefit by ongoing uh, professional education. For example, uh, at the university where I work, we run uh, special training programs in forensic mental health nursing, the only ones in Australia, so people can get a graduate certificate or graduate diploma in forensic mental health nursing and it's supported by Forensic Care. There's a lot of support in further education, staff development, other opportunities. You have support from clinical leadership, you have exposure to different programs which can also open your eye to see the different career paths that await you within the organisation. So you get that training as well and also we have compulsory training annually that we participate in 
we also have opportunity to commit yourself to uh, advance your career through educational pursuits in universities and you get supported by the organisation to do that. We have a high standard of educational requirements to be a forensic mental health nurse. You've got to have that postgraduate qualification, you've got to have specialised in mental health. Nursing is a critical part of our workforce without which we can't provide the services that we do to our consumers. Working in such a specialised field, it is an enormous challenge. Working with these kinds of patients, there's a big stigma around them and their lives and the portrayal of them. So a lot of these patients may come to us finding they have no support, they've lost their family, they've lost their friends, they've lost so much in life. With my role, I have uh, the opportunity to work with clients that are being discharged from the hospital and also with clients that are being discharged from the prison and being able to help them in their transition back to the community and seeing so many of them succeed in that and see how they have responded to treatment, see their lives turn around and go back into the community, re-establish themselves and function. It's rewarding to see that happen for them. Forensic care offers a fantastic diversity in terms of the roles that we can provide nurses, in terms of the settings that we can provide nurses, in terms of the training that we provide nurses, and the support and career development. I've been in it 25 years, and I've never wanted to do anything else. If you're looking at uh, career opportunities, forensic care is the way to go. If you really want to challenge yourself, if you really want to be this, this, this nurse that you, you think you can be, the opportunities of forensic care are there for you. My day is full of activities, the role is quite dynamic. You've got endless opportunity, you've got people that want to support you and people that are going to listen to you um, and you're not going to get that anywhere else. My family and friends have approached me saying why, why on earth would you want to work in the prison system? Why would you want to put yourself in that position and my response was why wouldn't I? All forensic mental health nurses are super nurses. <laughs> it is rewarding to see the difference that you make in other people's lives. I feel like I have definitely made the right choice. I've never been more sure about something in my life. All I know is that this is where I want to be. I've always felt part of the team. I've always felt valued and I believe that's that's why that that cog turns so well within, within forensic care. Come on board because I think we're a great team and a great organisation to work for. We provide bed-based services in the men's and the women's services. We also provide a significant period of outpatient and at-risk services to prevent people needing to have more restrictive mental health care. We do a lot of work around advocating and promoting mental health and mental wellness and reducing that stigma of mental health and suicide. If you forget that we are working in a criminal justice system and in institutional environments with big walls and the prison-based services with officers around us, we're working with people who are people and the care we provide is clinical focused care. For many of them for the first time they've just n never spoken to a psychologist, never spoken to a nurse or a doctor, uh, never spoken about what it means to grapple with mental health illness and so we get to be part of that journey. It's different because there's no Mental Health Act. You're not treating somebody under that act, you're actually trying to sell an idea to them, um, you're trying to uh, sell a way of life, if you like, so you're, you've really got to have that engagement, you've got to have that good communication to actually make the treatment work. The other thing about working in prison is you face some very complex situations, so you learn some really effective networking, interpersonal skills, how to manage a team, how to bring people around to a shared point of view, um, including the prisoner. Prisoners can usually see through someone who's not authentic. How we treat prisoners is a reflection of how we treat the most vulnerable citizens in our society. What meds are you on at the moment? They're very vulnerable at this stage. And to have somebody there that's actually helping them and not just um, being punitive in any sort of way or reminding them of their, their shortcomings. You know, we're looking at their recovery, we're looking at uh, putting them back on, on the straight and narrow. At the end of the day, people who are in prison don't need any more failures, so you want to make sure you can get as creative as you can to find the closest to their goal. We provide a whole range of services in prisons. The new Ravenhall prison will only increase the breadth of those services. Ravenhall's entirely unique. It'll provide a much greater experience for the 
a prisoner with mental illness and a much greater experience for staff who will be able to do more meaningful work in an environment that more closely approximates a hospital rather than a prison ward. For the first time, we can provide really a range of services on what we call an inpatient basis. That way, at the present time, we can only deliver, for example, at Thomas Emling Hospital. It's the first time that Forensic Care has partnered with a private prison provider, and I think there's some really exciting opportunities in terms of the scope of the services we'll be providing at the prison. We have uh, a fundamental basis of respect. Uh, I think prisoners can see that we're not being inauthentic about that, that we really are concerned about their welfare. I'm not there to sit there in judgement of them. You know, I'm there to try and help them. Clinicians enjoy that challenge. They enjoy having to sort of find ways to overcome those challenges and those barriers to uh, best practice mental health care. In prison, mental health services are so much more important because unfortunately the prevalence of mental illness in the population of people who are in prison is far, far greater than in the broader society. There's an opportunity to uh, influence people's lives in a very real way and to make broader systemic changes as well. Hidden amongst um, the prisoners are a group of people who are begging for the opportunity to make good of their lives and being able to seize upon those people and provide them with that chance is fantastic. People in the community have preconceived ideas about what it means to work in prisons. They're really big, scary places uh, with lots of scary people in them. But actually, you'll find generally the opposite to be true. You don't go out into the field not knowing what to do or not having supports around you. We work in a team. There's so much support to help you. I think it's the safest place you can work. And I often laugh because I've worked in public bars, OK? I've worked in pubs. And, um, you know, where you get someone to come through the door initially and they're like, oh, can I have a pint of lager and a packet of crisps? You know, it's all very good. And by the end of the night, they're swearing at you because you're not serving them quick enough. Jail is not like that. You know, it's not like that. It's always a very safe environment to work in. Safety is something that the organisation puts a really high priority on. There's not been one point in time where I felt unsafe. There's not one point in time where I felt um, unsupported. When you've always got that back up there behind you. You know, the whole crisis process within a jail is something that will really test you. There are huge rewards. You can see how the work that you do with individual prisoners can make a difference to them in their lives. It certainly keeps you coming back because there's never a dull moment. You'll get the opportunity to work in a really disciplined, really focused way. You'll get the opportunity to help people get that first level of independence, which is what we always want and you'll get the opportunity to see that and do that with a whole bunch of people who are purely there to help people. It offers a great degree of personal growth and the opportunity really to stretch yourself professionally. If I can succeed here, if I can help somebody in prison who's come in with lots and lots of social issues to get that chance, if you can do that you can work with anyone and do anything. It's a bit of a superhero moment.